What's going on guys? In this weekend's video, I'm gonna be explaining on how to fix your door lock actuator. Let me explain. So for this weekend, I have an issue with one of my doors, which is the fact that when I open or unlock all my doors, my driver's side door doesn't unlock at all. So I thought something was disconnected. I just removed some of the panels. Uh, well, I removed the one panel from the driver's side door and everything was connected. So I started doing some research and it's really common for a door lock actuator for an Evo driver's side door, which is what I've seen in the forums and everything to go out. So instead of buying a 60 to 80, I've seen $100 actual full door lock actuator assemblies. I figured I would try this, which I saw online. Um, and I'll try to link the video that I saw, but I'm gonna try to explain it a little bit better. Uh, it's, you could fix the actual actuator inside the little assembly. So I got this on Amazon and I'll link the part up under this description for $7. I think it was $7 with shipping. I think it was $10. I think I have Prime, so it was like $9 in total. But for under $10 or $7, I'm gonna fi fix my door lock actuator. So I'm gonna explain it. Let me get to that. But this video is gonna be more towards the Evo community, something that in the long run could help a lot of people. And again, that's the point of this channel is just to try to help everybody out. So that's why I wanted to do this video and try to explain it. So what I meant by saying that the door lock on the driver's side doesn't open is if I hit unlock, you see how it kind of wiggled, but it didn't close or open. It doesn't do nothing. And when you look at the other side, opening and closing. So the door lock actuator for this door is fucked up. And even with the keyless entry, as you can see, if I was to lock it, nothing. So let's get to fixing this. So step number one of this process is gonna be removing this complete panel itself. I'm gonna put this window up just to get it out of the way, but you're gonna to want to remove this screw right here. There's a screw on this side as well. Then you have a screw on here, which you just pull this tap up and there's a screw here. And you also have a screw in here, which you have to remove this tap as well. So four screws in total, one, two, three, four. And this panel should come off. You just slide it up and remove it out of the way. It has some little snap uh, snap clips. You literally have to put your hand in, in between and pull it out. So don't be afraid. This is super common and super easy to do. Don't feel like you're gonna break something. As long as you remove your four screws, you're set to go. So this is what we're looking at once we remove the door panel itself. One reminder is that you do have to unplug this wire from this little control module right here, which is right underneath, right there. And then these are the clips I was talking about that the entire door has. So you just gotta try to fit your finger somewhere around here and pull out towards you. Um, once you put it out, set it aside. And now this is what we're working with. So let me explain what is it that you're looking at. Um, one thing that you are gonna have to remove so I could get, a, get this out of the way is this right here. We're gonna remove this plastic cover. The door actuator is basically this assembly here. This little cable goes to an actuator that's placed right here and it's held with these screws right here, which I'm gonna explain right now on how to remove. So next step is to remove this little bracket here, remove this cover carefully because you are gonna be reusing this cover again and we're gonna be removing this foam pad that should just be put in place and just kind of be able to remove it. So let me do that and then we'll go to step number three. To remove this little foam pad, you're gonna have some clips. Let me see if I can show you guys. Uh, basically, you're gonna press, press them in from the inside, and by pressing them and clipping them in, you're able to pull them out. So now that we have everything out, we have full access to the actuator. So let me explain how we're gonna remove this. 
because these screws do have some Loctite on them. Now, to be able to remove the actual actuator itself, we do have to remove these three screws and this 10 millimeter bolt down here. For you to be able to remove these screws itself, you are gonna have to use a heat gun uh, and just stay there for a while, maybe a minute or two. Uh, just heat it up because it does have Loctite and you will strip the screws. So do this no matter what. Try it a little bit and if they're not loosening up, heat it up for one to two minutes, really, really hot, as hot as you can and they should come right out. So let me do that, remove these three screws, this bolt, and then I'll explain how to remove the actuator itself. So as you guys can see, we were able to remove the screws. The heat gun worked perfectly. Uh, I left one screw there because it's kind of hanging. Now I am gonna have to call it a night, unfortunately. Somebody's gonna kill me, uh, but evil priorities. Change the little motor tomorrow and we should have a nice working door. All right, so see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we are back and let's see where we left off. Where we left off was we removed these three screws. Now I still gotta remove this 10 mil bolt so this whole assembly could come apart and then we gotta remove it. So let's go ahead and get to work. All right, so now that we've removed our three screws and the window rail bolt, we are gonna go into removing the rods in the inside, which is the one with the yellow tab and the blue tab that you could barely see. Um, let me explain. So for the yellow tab, let me remove it and then I'll explain kind of what is it, the movement that you have to do and then we'll get to the blue rod later on after. So let me explain now what to do and how to remove these rods. Kind of spent a little bit of time figuring it out but literally it took me less than five minutes. To remove this rod, I kind of bent back this little plastic knob uh, and it just popped out. Uh, and when I put it back in, I'm gonna pop it back in so you can see how the rod is and how it sits. This clip is just to make sure that it stays there. Now for the rear clip, I have my key on the other side. When you twist it, the blue rod comes down and it's the same exact thing. Just pop it out. You're gonna see how to do it. Just imagine yourself pushing the rod that way and pushing the clip this way towards you. So pretty simple step. Honestly, it didn't take me that long. It took me less than five minutes. Now let's get to removing this actual actuator out of the door panel. Now to take the actuator apart, now that everything's loose, I literally just pushed it up, removed the rail to the side, pulled it up, and I'm gonna take out the whole assembly. I'm not gonna separate this part, and literally I disconnected this plug in the bottom, and sorry for the back camera angle, this the actuator should come out completely apart. So let's take this to the workbench and show you guys how we're gonna fix this. Let's remove the rods that were inside the door panel, which I just removed and it completely came apart super easy. And now for this one, same thing, push left, and then just pull out slowly. So now that the rods are completely apart, put this to the side, and we are gonna have to remove two screws, which are these two. So once you remove these two pieces apart, you can put this to the side. And now what we're gonna work with is this part right here. There should be a motor underneath this. We're gonna kinda chisel it out with a flathead all the way around and try to remove this cover. And then we'll get to the part where we'll replace this little motor. Let's just put it this way. Don't do what I did. Don't use a blade. Use a shizzle or a flathead because 
You'll regret it. Don't do it. How it looks once you take it apart. Again, don't use a blade. Don't use that. Let me put this to the side actually. Use a flathead screwdriver or a chisel or anything. Once you knock it out with a hammer and you just hammer it out, it comes right out completely together. So this is the part we are gonna be changing. As you can see, I got a brand new little motor. Now, um, let me figure out how to remove the gears and how to remove this motor itself. And we will get to switching the motor out apart. So as you can see, everything has been taken apart. It was pretty simple, honestly. There's just a screw on this side that you can see that's loose right now. Just loosen that or loosen this part out and then let me put it flat. You're gonna remove this, then you're gonna remove this wheel and then you're just gonna pry this out completely. Now, I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna remove this, put this on this new motor or new actuator and then just put everything back reverse process as you removed it. So I'm kind of glad I recorded this part because this is the part that you know, I was kind of confused about, but now that I'm actually doing it, this was literally common sense and super easy. So once you have put everything back together, uh, you're gonna wanna use some sort of glue or adhesive. I'm gonna just use a Yoohoo glue, it's meant for anything. Uh, just I'm just gonna put a tiny little bit because it already has a screw holding it on this side. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on each corner just to make sure that it doesn't leak, but again, it shouldn't. It's just plastic and it has a screw. So you just put a little bit of glue and that's it. Oh, too much. So I'm gonna let that dry out for maybe like five minutes. It's super glue, so honestly, that dries out really, really quick. Just gonna leave it there, precaution, and then reverse process everything we just did. the rods the foam pad this handle and everything you're gonna want to install back the door panel for you to be able to install the door panel and make it easy just make sure you twist this sideways like this so you can put this last piece of it in and then just literally push everywhere to make sure that everything clips and insert all the screws that you removed from the beginning so just reverse process
So just finished putting the door back together, the door panel and the actuator and everything. And for $7, I just honestly fixed my door actuator. So as you can see, if I hit unlock, well, it was already unlocked, but if I hit lock, it's locks and unlock, unlock. So that's honestly super, super awesome. I didn't even know I used to hit it and the lights wouldn't go off. But even if I close the door, I really like that. You know that when I unlock it, lights blink. When I unlock it, it beeps and it's closed. Successful, successful install. Honestly, this one is for the Evo community. I do this just to at least help one person out. If this video helps one person out, for me, spending all this time recording, editing, it's worth it because you know somebody was able to save 80 to 90 dollars instead of spending a whole their money on a door actuator what if they don't even know how to do it they would have paid somebody so it's just the fact that i could maybe help one person out means the world to me don't use the blade like i did horrible horrible moment but anyways i hope this was helpful take care wash your hands stay safe and like always keep grinding take care